Hi, I'm walking through the middle of beautiful downtown Belmont, surrounded by bars, restaurants, cafes. If you haven't been here in a while, boy, have things changed. Hi, I'm Christine Downing, also known as Christy Graziano, class of 1990 at Belmont Abbey College. The influence of Belmont Abbey is everywhere in the area, not just at the college. We're on our way to go visit with Bob, a local resident of Belmont who's lived here his entire life. Apparently, Bob is a collector of a great many things. I can't wait to see what he has. I hear it even includes some fancy cars. Hello, how are you? Hi, Bob. It's so nice to see you today. Nice to see you again. I love that hat. Thank you. Bit of a Ford fan? Uh, a bit. All right, I'm looking yeah, at a, a 1928 Model A Ford. Right. Tell me a little bit about this great vehicle. It's a Roadster. I bought it from a neighbor two doors up. Okay, it when, hasn't traveled far. When we got ready to sell it. Uh, I've had it since about 2003. Okay. And uh, it has had a body off, frame up restoration. It's spectacular. Thank you. I can't, I can't claim honors for the paint job, but I did do the mechanical work. Wow. It's just, it's gorgeous. Well, thank you very much. And let's see about, which, what's the, the other car? The other one? Also a Ford? It's also a Ford. It is a 1930 okay, we're Model A two-door sedan. It looks like you can fit more of the more company it's, it's in more, this one. It's more, of a, it's more of a family car. It's roomy. It's lovely. And uh, no, I haven't done any body or paint work to this one, uh, or had any done. It was pretty much like this when I got it. Wow, it's I have spectacular. Done I've done a lot of mechanical work. I've rebuilt the engine, put a new clutch in it, new tires, brakes. So we have two well-oiled machines. We do. <laughs> They're gorgeous. I love them. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Oh, uh, my pleasure. My I've, pleasure. I've got a few other things I'd like to show you if you have time. Oh, fantastic. I'd love to see them. All right. Come on upstairs in the garage. Great. Thank you. Wow, it's in fantastic condition. Thank you. I think you've updated some of these I, records. I have. <laughs> All right, stop. Oh, look at that. Early car company. I like this too, an advertising pocket knife. I'm going to take these over and we'll talk about them okay, a little bit that'll more. Be, that'll be fine. Oh, I'm so impressed with how much stuff you have. Right. I love it. You just have such a variety of treasure in here, Bob. I love the oil cans, Thank many of those you. I still use. I especially like this. It's an early liquor license. Yes. Pennsylvania. Keep reading. 1909. Pre-prohibition. Pre-prohibition. Prohibition 1920, of course. So a very fun collectible in very good condition. Now this is one of those, it's not terribly expensive in and of itself, but it's interesting because you don't see things right. like this. Yes. Um, to see one come up at an auction, I would expect it to bring in the anywhere, say from $50 to about $150. Oh, okay. So it's a kind of more of a thing of interest that's than more, a great thing of great value. That's more than I would have anticipated. Oh, good. I'm glad to have a pleasant surprise mm -hmm. for you then. Thank you. And then I also love this, which is Franklin, Syracuse, and a number. This is an employee badge. And the Franklin Company was a car part manufacturing company in Syracuse, New York. They did die cast automobile parts. And they started around 1896, went out of business in the early 30s. And this probably dates to around then, the later, their later years, 1930-ish. 
And uh, they are one of the first auto part manufacturers that existed in the United States. Didn't know that. Well, automobiles were pretty new then, right. and they were in the forefront of it. Okay. Um, I see a signed autograph of the famous clown, Emmett Kelly. Correct. And this is for the Mineral and Gem Festival, Spruce Pine, North Carolina. How far is that from here? Uh, Spruce Pine's probably 80 miles. Okay, so miles. say an hour and a half or so. And it's dated from August 2nd, 1963. Right. Now, Emmett Kelly, very popular also, in his time. His character was known as Weary Willie. He, to me, personified that era of sort of the hobo clown. Mm -hmm. um, Emmett Kelly also was very prolific in appearing at festivals and events. He also uh, was fond of giving his autograph. So although we have a photograph of him, a date which tells us exactly when this occurred, and his original signature in a ballpoint blue pen, it doesn't have a tremendous amount of value because he signed an, aw an awful lot of stuff. Okay. Now, there are people who may love Emmett Kelly actively seeking his autograph, but for most people, it's probably worth around $10 to $20 okay. and is more of, you know, a fun collectible, right. something to hang on to. All right. Why don't you tell me a little bit about your comic collection? How did you come into these? Uh, I was the executor of a, an elderly friend's estate and I cleaned his house out and I found these comic these books. These are a great collectible and you see have names. I'm holding Iron Man, which one do I have? I've X got X-Men. These are comics that you'll still find today. Now comics are arranged into different eras. The very first comic books are known as the Golden Era. Picture the first Superman okay. comic back right. in 1932-33. Um, these are from the end of the Silver Age of comics, and that takes us to the late 1960s, right to around 1970. And I think you have a little bit of both, uh, Silver Era and then Bronze Era comics, which start around 1970. And I can tell that by the cover price. These are 20 cent right. comics. We have a couple in here that are 15 cent. And comics, they're printed on paper. They're not, it's not the highest quality. It's sort of a newsprint mm -hmm. paper. So condition is the biggest factor in determining right. value on comics, as well as the title. And uh, these, these were read and loved as they were meant, as they were meant to be. But a comic collector would absolutely find these, find these interesting. Okay, all right, good. Well, we got the football card. Oh my goodness. And uh, I have no idea of the value of them. These these were belong to the son of of the elderly gentleman. Okay. That, that so the these came I from your care. friend. They these are dated 1959 and 1960. Well, a variety of teams. Oh, you even have some teams. I have some team cards, cards as well. The Chicago Cardinals. That's that's different. As I said, with the comic books. Cards, sports cards, even non-sports cards, trading cards, they are all about condition. Mm -hmm. And now a number of agencies exist that officially grade your cards. So okay. if you were interested in selling them and want to get the most money for the cards, you take them or send them away to a place to get graded. And they range on a scale of one to 10, with 10 being as if it never left the packet, I, hands never touched mm -hmm. it, eyes barely rested on it but people who love sports cards would be interested in this because it's a very different era of football um not many helmets no which i can't even i can't even imagine so what a fun these are not football players those are not football these are players stooges. <laughs> yes they are <laughs> i didn't expect to see the three stooges in the end of the sports card Okay. So you've got a single stooge worth a small amount, but when you have their antics captured together, particularly this one on the bottom, which says your nose is too big and your brain is too small. <laughs> Pretty classic three stooges. Yep. Okay. Again, condition is everything, and you can even get your three stooges sports cards graded <laughs> the way you do with uh, 
This has been great. I think I like the Three Stooges cards more than I like the football cards. That's my personal taste well, and sense of humor. Well, well, I'm glad to have had you. It's been a pleasure. This for has you, been fantastic. But I need to get back to Belmont Abbey. How about I give you a ride? <gasps> Can we go in the convertible? Sure. Oh, fantastic. I can't wait. I think it'll make it. Terrific. <laughs> We can ride in this one if you'd like. Oh, I or would that love one. To. I'll give you a choice. Oh, convertible in my favorite color? Yeah. You gonna drive? Can I? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you take the wheel. Good oh, do I have to do the hands? No, hand no I'll do I'll okay. do that. I'll just enjoy the ride. <laughs> Let's go. All right. Perfect day for a ride. So here I am back at Belmont Abbey. Bob just dropped me off. What a fantastic day to take a ride in a convertible, although my hairdo is a little worse for the wear. People have all sorts of connections to Belmont Abbey. Bob started right here when he was christened at Belmont Abbey Basilica. We'd love to know if you have treasures and collections or your connection to Belmont Abbey. Maybe you can be part of the Abbey Attic.